Hey YouTube, Mikamu here with a, another episode, or this is part two of my um, bullet train Mikamu makes level. So if you didn't see part one, I'd recommend that you go back. Um, I'll put a link in the description and annotation up here. Go back and watch part one. This is basically the series where I make um, Mario Maker levels and I show um, you guys my process. Although, as I said in part one, there isn't really a process. This is basically me sort of like having an idea from either a pun or something and just going with it. So anyway, um, so this is roughly the part where I was halfway. I stopped, um, came back to the level, started playing through the first half of the level. Um, I think then I go back to work on the area up here, the secret area. Now, as I said in part one, um, Definitely, I think it's better that I'm recording after I've done this because I'm more able to reflect on my process or lack thereof of a process. I'm always thinking of, you know, like what can the player stomach especially given the wide range of um player like levels and skill sets in in this game you know you've got people who are new to mario you got people who are veterans and so i was thinking like for certain types of gaps like this one it seems kind of wide maybe a trampoline might be necessary to get out of the space now that i think about it though i think mario can actually wall jump off of both of these um bullet bill cannons um Surprisingly, the distance that you can wall jump from is pretty wide. It's actually not necessarily as the walls don't have to be necessarily close or the surfaces I should say because these aren't walls or cannons, but you get the point. But also, as I said in part one, there's definitely a need to gauge the space or the range of, the, of each bullet bill cannon. I think uh, when I'm halfway through this, this segment, I, I started to realize that like Maybe there shouldn't be so many cannons in the level. But here I'm just testing the, the viability of having a trampoline, which seems like a pretty bad idea. <laughs> I don't even think it make the final the final cut for the level, so. This is another power up, so realization that, you know, should definitely put, especially if you're making a normal level, put power-ups, you know, every maybe quarter segment. Because the last one um, in this level was back in the beginning, like in the first screen. So now I went back to the secret area, quote unquote, and I'm trying to see if I can hide a propeller mushroom in like, the upper screen just like a good uh, sweet little goodie for somebody who is curious but this doesn't really end up working yeah so first I try putting it off screen like that um, so there's a one-up and then something interesting happens when you um, yeah the propeller head goes up in the air and then it gets cut off by the screen, it doesn't fall back down. See, I'm jumping around expecting it to fall back down, but it doesn't. I guess because that the propeller mushroom actually spins off in the air if you don't grab it enough, quickly enough. Or maybe the screen cuts it off, I don't actually know what's happening there. So this is a signature, signature thing I do. I um, wrap things in coins to indicate like a secret or something. But the thing is, again, if it's going to be off screen, um, it's going to be hard to see. Now, after making this level and after reflecting on it, I realized that, that I think you can push the screen length if you put an object up in the sky. I didn't think of it at, at the time, so I was basically kind of at the mercy of whatever the game's you know default mechanics are. And the screen length was definitely not wide enough to accommodate that.
Fast forwarding here, I tried to do arrow thing, but my arrow wasn't wide enough. It ended up looking like a hammer or a cross or an arrow, I mean, like a bow and arrow, I don't know. I, I don't know what I was thinking. It was kind of weird, but yeah. And <laughs> yeah, now it's a cross. I actually regret spending so much time on this secret area, but I realized it wasn't really even worth it. So as I said before, have power-ups often, especially if you're making a normal level. You're definitely going to want to be fair. I think the next one is the halfway point, so... You'll notice that most, I don't want to be mean, but most decent levels have power-ups roughly at their halfway point. And um, near the beginning. It just makes sense. And it's something that, that Nintendo themselves would actually do anyway. Now I am torn on the actual use, usage of uh, checkpoint flags. I know a lot of people don't like having them to sort of create this form of difficulty, but in my mind it's sort of like an artificial difficulty, like, oh, I couldn't, you know, save at this point, which is the hardest point in the level. I had to go back to the beginning and try again. And so it's like, I feel it's like artificial lengthening of the level. But then again, you know, it, it, it is your level and it is your experience that you're creating. So there are some certain types of levels that can benefit from not having any checkpoint flags. There definitely are, especially if you're following a style like, you know, uh, Kazario or, you know, some of these more difficult like ROM hacks or, you know, creators. That's like definitely valid. Or if it's a speed run, like there's no point in having a speed run level with, where, with checkpoint flags. It totally doesn't make any sense. But if you're just making an ordinary level and you're trying to create like an ordinary experience, I would say checkpoint flags are something you should you, you should consider, um, especially like I said, if you're not making it a super difficult level, there's no point in not having one. The only thing is knowing where to place it. I do it roughly halfway normally, and I started doing it in levels that are, aren't even that difficult, just to be you know a decent person. But again, like I said, it comes down to what you want to create in your experience. So the thing around here is where I realized, like, A, I shouldn't have so many overloaded bullet bills or the red bullet bill cannons, and B, there shouldn't, there should be more platforms. So that's exactly what I'm doing now. I'm trying to create the maximum distance of space. That didn't work out. And like I pointed out before, the difficulty here is that like there's um, you need you need enough space to run off of, of a surface in order to get a cannon to follow you, and that's that's what made making this level difficult. Sort of knowing what would work, what wouldn't work. It's not so much a problem with the red bullet bills because they actually they um, if you jump in front of them they trigger. But if you're trying to run and get a black bullet bill to follow you, it has to be either... It can't be too tall, because it has to see you, I guess. You have to be in this like, line of, of sight. And then the other thing is also, you need a long enough surface to run off of. So even here, I was like trying to trigger the red bullet bill. I moved it back to see if I could get, get something. Um, get some traction there, get it to follow me. So now we're nearing the end of the level. 
I of course wanted to make a bit more um, challenges before the end. So I was debating if I needed another platform or another bullet bill cannon. Now you can tell I'm making the surfaces longer because I need space to run off of. I was trying to do a thing where I'd, I would <laughs> jump to the, the flagpole, but didn't really work out here. But I finally found some usage for the uh, Mario overlay, so that's good. So this is the point where I'm retesting the entire level, but I don't go the whole way through, just the first part. So I feel like the second part was well built. But definitely when I fix up this level, I'm gonna go back and um, Make sure the length of, of each platform is long enough for you to do a running start with the bullet bill. Because for some of the cannons, you have to duck in front of them, and it's really not intuitive. It's not intuitive at all. I was, I was trying to figure out here the minimum length I need to um, to jump to the pole. Because so I was thinking of pulling, putting a bullet bill cannon here too. Wanted to see what would work, what wouldn't work. Oh, that was nasty. What I like about this is you can sort of see the flag, like the tip of the flag waving, and it's a signal to, to use the bill to jump onto the, um, the top part. But I want to see the minimum amount of space I can get away with. So for someone patient, they could wait for the bullet bill and use it to jump. For somebody who just wants to end the level, they can just run straight into the flagpole, the bottom of the pole. And then here I go back and put enemies on the platform surfaces just to make the level more challenging. I put it at a normal difficulty, but all my levels thus far have been apparently expert. I don't know why. My first one, I, I, my first two, I know why they were expert, but everything else should not be expert at all. Like, just, they shouldn't be. 
So I'm assuming this is a normal level. I mean, that's that's my hope anyway. Yeah, as you can see here, I'm using only paratroopers that are the red Koopa Troopers. Like I said, I don't really like using the green Koopa Troopers, but I have them in the secret area or the secret top area, I guess. I decided to get rid of the Priyana plant, I think. Or no, I gave it wings. I think in the final iteration, though, I might get rid of it. And that's pretty much it. Um, this is the end of episode one. Show you guys the next episode I make next time. See you later, YouTube.